Well, good morning on this last day of 2011. I hope 2011, as it closes, finds each of you reflecting as I've been <laughs> reflecting, not just yesterday and today, but it will continue. I actually, in fact, went to bed about 11 o'clock last night and got back up about 1.30. I hadn't slept a wink because I was in total reflection. And I came to the computer for a little while, went back to bed about 2 o'clock. And would you believe I still woke up at quarter to 4 this morning? <laughs> so I haven't gotten much sleep, and I do intend to get some sleep when I finish this, although I uh, did promise a friend in Australia that I would have a little bit of a of a chat on Skype uh, before so before I go to bed I will keep my word there anyway the title that I've chosen for today should come as no surprise to anybody 2011 a year of mass awakening and my blurb is a year ago as 2011 was being birthed I had great optimism I expected massive visible changes to take place I fully believe these changes would involve changes in the geopolitical world, including the collapse of the old world order's financial system of fraud and corruption. I fully expected that by the end of the year there would be indications of the kingdom of heaven on earth. I am disappointed in that regard. Still, as I reflect back on this year, it has been a year of mass awakening. And indeed it has. I've already talked in other videos about how it began really after Christmas in Egypt with the bombing of the Coptic Christian churches and then the Muslims forming human shields around and it led to Egypt beginning this mass uh, demonstrations that have taken place in virtually well I was gonna say virtually all countries I'm not sure if it's all countries but in most countries around the world I do believe that the Occupy movement, as it's become known since September, began to take to take root, although it was happening in much of Africa, the Near East, in, in uh, Asia Minor, and in, in Europe, even before it happened in the United States. Uh, but as it sits right now, the uh, current criminal governments still seem to be at least tenuously in control, although there are signs of that weakening. Uh, there are still signs of, of a global economic collapse, some of which is planned and some of which may be beyond the plans of the elite to control. I don't know where all of that stands. As I said, I fully anticipated that by this time, uh, the Republic would be in place in the United States, uh, which means that all people's rights would be protected. And yet, even in my own case, I'm having to file legal papers in the lawsuit and the uh, legal matter that I've been involved in, claiming my rights that are mine by right. Rights that have been denied now by two levels of the court system here in, the, here in Florida the local court and the appeal court and uh, the writ of mandamus is basically completed I was going to file it yesterday but I am going to wait till the till probably next Tuesday to uh, to actually file the paperwork uh, I changed my mind on there and I will reflect a little bit more and see if there are any any more uh, final changes before I do submit it uh, so that's a, a step that I am taking but uh, it has been a year of a lot of inner work in a lot of people. I am connected, as I've said other times, with more people around the world than I ever thought possible. And I honestly believe that I could go in to many countries and people would be happy to see me and would provide me a place where, where I could stay at least on a temporary basis uh, for holiday or vacation or 
some other kind of visit. And this is a beautiful thing, and that's true also in the United States, that I could go in various states. So my spiritual family has become international in character, which is something that, again, I did not anticipate at all at the, a year ago. I hadn't started my videos. I didn't start my videos until January the 11th. So it's not been quite a year yet, but I've actually done more than one video a day for the entire year because there are, have been days that I've done more than one video. One day I think I did three videos way back in January. In any case, uh, as yesterday uh, progressed and I had phone calls with various people and conversations with them, I was very, very disappointed, especially at uh, with one of the conversations that I had that involved my spiritual family uh, in Coco, where I've spoken and where I was on the board and I had thought that there was going to be reconciliation there was an agreed to meeting that would take place uh, this coming Monday in the in the evening uh, however that meeting was held without me um, on Thursday and it was decided that uh, because I do daily videos certain people there feel unsafe that I would reveal things about what's going on there that they don't want revealed to the world so they made the decision not to accept me back into fellowship at least not in the nucleus group of that uh, of that spiritual community and those of you that know the name know the name and they're if anybody from there listens to this they're not gonna like that what I just said but that's the truth and I had a conversation with my friend Margie after I found out about the decision having been made on Thursday and Margie threw me into a tremendous amount of process because I will share one of the things that she she said because she is open like I am as she defended me at one point someone said to her of course you would defend him you're just like him and what she was told was that she's covertly passive aggressive and she had never seen that in herself and she didn't see it in me but as she reflected on those comments yesterday doing some deep inner work herself she said well maybe there's some truth there no she didn't say maybe she said there's some truth. I hurt people and I don't even know I'm hurting people and Ron, so do you. And so this is something that kept me awake last night, this whole situation, pondering, 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 because I reflect very deeply and God is my judge. I do not. And God isn't my judge, by the way. He's no one's judge, uh, at least not a separate God that's somewhere else. We are our own judge and God judges us through our own judgments. As you judge, you shall be judged. That's what it means. God judges us through our own judgments. It's not an external judgment. It's an internal judgment. Uh, but anyway, I, I again got off the, on a tangent and lost my train of thought, which I, which I do, as you know, those of you who listen. But I don't want to hurt anybody is where I was going. I want only the best for everybody. But I have unconscious reactions, apparently, and it's true, that when I feel hurt, I guess I covertly am passive-aggressive. I, I don't see that, quite honestly. But others have seen it in Margie, and Margie says, yeah, Ron, I am just like you. We're like 
that with each other. And I imagine if it's true of the two of us, I mean, Margie's one of the most loving people that I know. And yet some people perceive her as being hurtful. And I imagine some people perceive me. Well, I know they do. I mean, I get comments from, from people that are sometimes pretty nasty on my, you know, responses on YouTube videos, both on Facebook and YouTube. And I don't know where these people are coming from. But in my personal life, I know there are people that still I feel distant from. And I have, this is not something new that just happened this year even. This is something that I've been aware of and I don't know, I don't know what it is. And, I, and the people, in some cases, the people that I feel alienated from are people that I do feel have wounded me. Therefore, I'm still playing victim. I, I understand all of these things. And I'm looking at them very closely because one of my prayers has been as I, as I meditate, not just this year, but throughout the years, as I meditate using fire uh, on my altar, I often pray, let the fire consume all my dross, everything that is not me, let it be consumed and transformed, transmuted, so that I might have a pure heart toward life, toward everyone in life. And that is my greatest desire. And so this mass awakening is happening in me that I'm awakening to parts of myself, shadow elements perhaps, that I wasn't even thinking about. As I said, some of this is just as new as yesterday's con or last evening's conversation with Margie. I mean, I was not aware how much, I mean, I, I knew that people wanted me to apologize because of the hurt that I caused uh, in the whole situation. And I thought, I didn't hurt anybody. The hurts were coming. Other people were hurting me. I wasn't hurting anybody. But that's not the perception that other people had. And, and everyone's feelings are valid. They may not always be true, but they're valid. What we feel is what we feel. That's what we always teach in the workshops. And anyway, this awakening, I'm sure, is causing many people that are honest with themselves to reflect more deeply, more humbly, with a, a greater willingness to grow up and mature as spiritual beings. No more being children of God, but being adults of God. And I'm wondering if as adults of God, we can still have the childlike innocence and the childlike ability to let go of things, the young childlike ability. Although I wonder, as I said that, I wonder how much of the wounds that children give and take are embedded into, their, into our character as children and then show up in adult life and how we de develop the defense mechanisms to deal with these these wounds that it seems like to an observer well the child just let it go I mean they're arguing with somebody one minute and they're the best friends the next and I, I've seen that with my own grandchildren and I've seen it with other children throughout the years my own children when they were younger uh, my son and daughter used to get into horrible fights and yet they would defend each other very strongly and and they love each other they really do love and and, and care about each other to this day uh, yet when they were young they would oftentimes get into scraps <laughs> my daughter would often do things and blame blame her older brother <laughs> and it was pointed out to me by a by a close friend at one time and he said watch he says, you think it's Tommy doing this, and it's really Carrie. <laughs> anyway, this is human nature. And as we awaken, we're going to be looking at our own nature, our own humanity. And Margie says, Ron, you're still human. Ron, 
accept your own humanity. You still are, are wanting to deny parts of your own humanity. And she asked me if I was willing, if she sees me doing something that is covert or passive aggressive, that she immediately, in the moment, pointed out to me. And, and she says, are you willing to allow me to do that? She says, I've asked some people in my life to do it for me so that I will see that in myself. And reluctantly, I said, okay, because the first thing that came to my mind, I don't want to be embarrassed in front of a whole lot of people. You know, that's, why would I, why would I want that? But I do want to purge and deal with all those issues that are within me, that are keeping me from loving to the best of my ability, because that truly is my desire for myself and for humanity, that we learn to be compassionate to each other, that we learn to listen, that we learn to love at a deeper level, that we learn to accept each other, that we learn not to be freezing each other and thinking, well, that's the way they were, so it's the way they're always going to be. We do that to ourselves and we do it to each other. And we need to grow up and adopt a new way of seeing, a new way of looking at that. So as 2011 has been a year of mass awakening on a deep spiritual level, I look forward to 2012 being a year of some of the changes that didn't happen in 2011 actually occurring. I don't know what form they're going to take, and I don't know if they're all going to be completed in the next year. You know, there's great anticipation of 2012, just as there was great anticipation for a lot of people of 2011. And this is definitely the window when change is occurring and the form that it takes will be revealed as it's revealed and not before. Anyway, these are my reflections on the last day of this year and I wish each of you a happy new year as 2012 kicks in and as 2011 says goodbye. Namaste. Thank you once again for listening.